Uh, another one of those videos on the vegan gut micro microbiome myths and legends that they come up with. Yes, nothing, nothing, um, uh, you know, if you're not getting a, a couple of farts out on a daily basis, you're not doing it right, apparently. Now, let's just go straight to some of these buffoons and check out what they're saying. Ah, oh, our favourite buffoon himself, Mick. I'm Mike, and in this episode, whether you call it your probiotic bacteria, your microbiome, or simply your gut, they're all telling Um, yeah. <laughs> what are they telling us, uh, Mick? What are they telling us? Telling you the same thing, and that is, go vegan. His gut's telling him to go vegan. Hmm. Interesting. He seems to have be able to talk to bacteria. He's a bacteria whisperer. And he goes through the sort of regular nonsense and all that. Here's another study that he actually pulls up, you know, about the microbiome. You know, it's all this sort of misdirect, you know, grab this, grab that, whatever. It's all this sort of stuff. And then he goes, celiac disease, gastric cancer, autism, obesity, anorexia, irritable bowel. So gut microbiome dysbiosis contributes to a myriad of elements, hosts, allergies, celiacs. I mean, isn't celiacs associated with basically eating grains that have got um, gluten? I don't know. Meat doesn't cause celiacs. I can tell you definitely that. Um, uh, I know plenty of people um, in who are obese for eating uh, a lot of plants and oils and stuff like that. And a lot of basically ex-vegetarians or ex-vegans that have got gut issues have had their colon ripped out or all sorts of things. So mm, I think he's talking to the wrong crowd. He's lost the plot in that regard. Gut microbiome disorders, I've discussed them before. They have a lot of different etiologies and uh, when you look at tribal populations like the the Maasai, the Inuit and all that, they never had any of these problems and they were on a 100% animal-based diet. So absolute friggin' nonsense that you need basically to eat um, forage, grass or fibre to basically be healthy. What a load of crap. They've done all the experiments. They've proved the, the opposite. And Paul Mason's actually shown one where they re withdraw completely all the fiber from the diet and uh, all gut issues go away so absolute nonsense let's hear what another buffoon within the vagoon arise community has to say about all this oh our dear friend hench uh, prevotella or bacteroides strains the beneficial prevotella strains feed on the fiber and resistant starch found in garbage yes we know the Pravatella feed on that sort of up and become abundant but they're not beneficial he's got it wrong whole plant feeds that's right all the good guys are whole foods vegans there's a few brain cells missing there definitely the bacteroides strains feed on things like animal protein and fats oh those awful bacteroidy um ones that feed on Animal um, protein and fat. How awful. Now let's just check this and see what the real reality is of this. Immune response to Prevotella bacteria in chronic inflammatory disease. Microbiota plays a key role in shaping the immune system, blah, blah, blah. But let's go down to the juicy stuff. Studies indicate Prevotella predominant activate T-like receptor leading to production of um, TH17 polarization cytokines. Oh, great. And interleukins, all these interleukins, stimulates all these other interleukins in the um, epithelial cells, which promote mucosal TH17, IL-17, IL immune response in neutrophil recruitment. Privatella mediated mucosal inflammation leads to systemic um, a dissemination of inflammatory mediators, bacteria and bacterial um, products, which can, which in turn may affect systemic disease outcomes. 
studies in mice support the causal, causal, causal role of Prevotella at, as a colonization experiment promotes clinical and inflammatory features in of human disease. Yes, the vegan diet definitely promotes an abundance of Prevotella and definitely promotes an abundance of inflammation. What a cockwomble. When compared with strict um, uh, commensal bacteria, that's the stuff that's actually with you. We've got some Prevotella, all of us. The difference is that uh, it's kept in check by all the other bacteria. It doesn't you know, become abundant because we consume bacterioides um, with animal foods, um, like um, lactobacillus, which you get also when you come out of your mother's um, uh, canal you pick up a whole lot of uh, lactobacillus. All those things that come from animal foods are protective, you know? So that's the difference. The benefits, bacteriorities, when we look at them, basically, there are an endless and endless um, information on um, bacterial colonization, do, 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 bacteriorities in model, Dependent, do, 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 improve the immune system. Prevention of inflammation. I'm not going to read. People can actually go through and actually um, take a take a look at all this sort of stuff. Commensal bacteria colonize low intestinal are capable of mediating powerful effects on the host immune system. Exactly. It's got beneficial. The identification of such factors loosely between immune system and commensal bacteria. They're actually seeing that the relation between this bacteria and um, basically the immune system are very good, are positive. So, and we know where that comes from, an animal-based diet. Now, the other information on this sort of stuff, human studies have reported significant association between vitamin D and microbiome composition. In cross-sectional studies the healthy of healthy individuals, vitamin D intake was negatively associated with the abundance of Prevotella. So when you're on a species-appropriate diet, which has a lot of good levels of cholesterol, producing good levels of bacteria, um, it is negatively associated. So it keeps basically the Prevotella down. So have a good vitamin D status and you'll keep those Prevotella from over becoming overabundant and inflammatory, causing inflammation. Whether at smaller amounts, they're fine. At large amounts, they're a problem and all that. Also, when we look at the bacterioides and these ones in particular, Fragilis, which is the ones that Hinch was um, talking about. When we take a look at that, pretty much further, both of these organisms synthesize, they pretty much, um, uh, Bacteria of this um, Fragilis apparently also uses either osovalerate, carboxylate, and IPM pathways for leucine biosynthesis. They can actually um, produce leucine, which is really good. Maybe that's another reason why vegans basically are osteoporotic eventually, or people that are on such diets have weak bones and thin bones and thin muscles, mm. unless you're taking steroids like Hinge. Apparently, he did mention that once that he did. And so did uh, um, uh, Durian Ryder, that other um, crackpot in the vagunarized community. Furthermore, both of these organisms synthesize isoleucine and aniline using carbon from 2-methylbutyrate. And so basically, butyrate, you're basically in a low-carbohydrate state. In, re in preference to the synthesis of these aminos de novo from glucose. So rather than actually using glucose, okay? Thus, it appears that these organisms have the ability to regulate alternative pathways to the biosynthesis of certain amino acids, and that pathway involves reductive carboxylation and are likely to be favoured 
in their natural habitats. Exactly because the body favors these things because they can produce important nutrients that the body needs. Beneficial bacteria that come from an animal-based diet improve the microbiome and reduce inflammation. Those that come from basically a vagunarized kibble diet increase inflammation and make things worse. That's the reason why Hench suffered and he had to go to Goji Man for some assistance with his gut problems. Yes, he was getting just too much fiber and causing himself far too much irritation down there. Mm. Yes, those little wiggly things were causing him too much irritation. <laughs> yes, but he still hasn't learned his vagunarized lesson, has he? Ah, uh, yes, they never learn until they get too damaged and then they run for the hills and leave the kill cult culture of the vagunarized cult. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. See us.